girls. What you're going to need to go is get a flag back there because we're going to sing about love is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart. You want to get a flag? One, two, three. And just sing from there. Love is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart. Oh, the castle of my heart. go and when he's older he will not depart from it. Amen. So we gotta train up our children young, you know, to be loving the house of house, house of God. In the mornings when I say to faith or the next morning, it's church day anymore. She's like, yes, she loves church, you know. And um, I'm just trying to think of a, a kid song. Oh yeah, this was the one. So you gotta march. You're gonna have to march. Can you march? I'm too young to march with the infantry.
say, go with Julie, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would also be in that room as you're, as she's teaching them, Father. We, we just pray, pray a blessing on Julie this morning. Father, that she has come and done this tremendous work for you, Father. And Lord, that you just touch these children, Lord, as they learn and they learn about who Jesus is and what he has done for us and all the great things you have done, Father. And bless our children, Father. Just guide them, Lord, as they grow, Lord, that they will serve you all the days of their life, Lord, and that they would honor you in the house of God. And we thank you, Jesus, for these precious children. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That was mine. Um, so they're so precious. And, um, you know, just... Oh, this morning, I could feel the presence of the Lord this morning. And as I was getting ready, um, last night we were... I was singing some songs and going away next week to a conference in Barrie and you know they I sing probably about a hundred songs when I'm there because I sing Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I'm usually pretty exhausted by the time I get home. But the Lord always comes and he always his his Holy Spirit is there. And uh, you know the Lord just said to me, he said, you know Paula don't don't forget the old hymns because in the hymns there's so much of the word of God. The word of God is is why we're here, right? That is the word of God is him speaking to us. The word of God is what what makes us grow and what makes us change. But let's let's sing that. I think you might have it in your hymn book. It's called There is Power in the Blood. Would you be free from your burden and sin? There's power in the blood. Church actually, I think in a bit before that. 
and um, it's been a week now that she's been sleeping every night. So she's here. Right here. And you know, even last week when um, we came up and you know we prayed for probably there's way more miracles, but I came up and I got at, prayed for the carpal tunnel syndrome thing. And you know, I just kept believing on the Lord. I, it was still bothering me a little bit as the week went, but as the week kept going, and I was lifting up big files and stuff like that, and it's gone. I don't have any big files. The enemy, he tries to come against us, and he, he wants us to stop what we're doing, whatever ministry that you're in, children's or administration or, you know, men's ministry or greeting at the door. He just wants to stop you from doing what, you know, what God has called you to do. But you just have to keep going in faith and saying, you know, I believe, Lord, that you healed me. And, and that he has that power, wonder-working power. And so we're going to continue on with um, uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins?
blood this morning, Lord. For the blood that was shed, Lord. You just threw yourself the sacrifice for each one of us, Lord. For every single one of us, Lord, in this room you had. You would have went to the cross. You would have died for us, Lord. You would have died for our sins. Lord, for everything that we have done, there's not one, no, not one in this place that has sinned against you, Father. But today, Lord, in this place, Lord, we lay everything at your feet, Father. We lay all our past, Lord, all our regrets, Lord, at your feet, Lord. Lord, I feel, Lord, I feel if we lay our messy lives down, Father, we lay them at your feet, Lord, all the burdens that we've been carrying, Father, we lay it at your feet this morning, God. Lord, for you're the one, Lord, who's going to make a way, Lord. Make a way, Lord, when you when we don't even see a way, Father, through finances, through personal things, Father, that we're going through, Father. This morning, Lord, we just lay it all at your feet. your name in this house, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, you want to work with us, Lord. You want to deal with us, Lord. You want to deal with our sin, Father. You want to deal with our messiness, Father, this morning, Father. When everything
I keep hearing in the spirit, I kept hearing this rattling sound. I thought it was them rattling bones coming back to life, but it isn't. I hear the rattlesnake's tail rattling. It's a warning. God gives us the Holy Spirit to warn us and prompt us. He's our navigator. He's, he's, he's the one that reminds us something's coming, something's coming. I hear that rattle. God is warning someone in here. Come to me now. Give it all to me, says the Lord. The enemy is about to strike. Put him under his feet where he belongs. Put him under your feet where he belongs. walk with a veil over our eyes because we really don't want to face what, what we have to face within our lives. All of us have fallen short. All of us have fallen short. And sometimes we allow pride to step in the way. But let go of that pride and come forth. We're not, we're not doing this to scare you. But we're doing this because God is leading us to speak to you about this, how important it is. Because he wants to see you free and have that liberty in him. And so don't let pride step in the way. Because pride loves to do that. Pride loves to take a hold. Let go of your pride. And how 
humble yourself before the Lord. It can also be a spirit of brokenness, burdens, that the enemy is going to strike and bring you down deeper into that brokenness and into those burdens. Whatever's attacking you, that's what he's going to do. And he wants you to come to him now. The Lord wants you to come. It's not because you've done anything wrong. It's what you're going through, something you are going through. And you really need the Lord to lift you up and bring you out of that before the enemy pulls you down in deeper despair. That's don't what don't be ashamed. No. Don't let shame hold you back. It's nothing. You don't need to be ashamed. It's a love of Christ that is reaching out to you. His love is so awesome. Come and receive His love.
Oh, yeah. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. We've been praying. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep giving glory to the Lord. For His faithful love truly does endure forever. I'm going to ask all of us to bow our heads. We've been praying. We're going to keep praying. All of you online, just bow your head with us. And we're going to pray together as as new creation, wherever you're joining from. So, Father, right now, we want to come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithful love to us, Lord. A love that lasts a thousand generations, Lord God. Father, your goodness has no limits. Your grace has no bounds. Father, just pray your blessing on each one, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit, that you would be moving among us. The Holy Spirit, you would anoint our ears, give us ears to hear. That, Lord, our ears would not be stuffed up, but that we would actually hear what you are saying to us in the church. And the Holy Spirit would anoint our mind, give us the mind of Christ, that we might understand. And the Holy Spirit, you would transform us into the very image and likeness of Christ from the inside out. That, Lord, we'd be to the glory of your name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> oh, I've been speaking on something that I don't like speaking on. And I keep having to speak on it because the Lord won't let me stop. I'd like to stop. I wish I could stop. The Lord says, no, you're not done yet. <laughs> I've been having to speak on offense. I hate speaking on offense. I'm getting myself offended by speaking on offense. I feel it's an offense to myself. And I can't get away from it. Um, but I'm not... I'm partially speaking on offense, but I'm also speaking on freedom. Um, but I have to speak on what tries to take away our freedom. So I have to address the reality. Spiritual reality and physical reality. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. <coughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 14. Verse 14 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 14. It says, But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. For even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it, or when one, shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all, with open, unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, or a glass, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Now, I have to speak a little bit on offense. I want to speak mostly on freedom. But the two are, are together. Um, and that's hard. But bear with me. Um, there are two scriptures for this church. 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says that if anyone be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, all is come new. All is made new. The second scripture is found in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 that says, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. Amen. Now the thing is, it, the context here is Moses went up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, to receive the law. The law declares God's goodness and man's sinfulness simultaneously. It declares God's goodness because this is the standard. God is perfectly holy. He is perfectly just. He is perfect. He is holy. He is good. He is all righteous, all holy. 
And the law simultaneously points to our failing, that we're not, that you cannot be good enough to measure up to the standard, that all have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned, that none of us can measure up to God's standard. God's standard is holiness, it is perfection, and yet all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and so the law is declaring two things at the same time. God is good, we're not. I'm going to make it really, really simple. God is really good, we're really not. Why are we not? Because nobody can live according to that standard. Nobody can do it perfectly. In fact, the scripture says if you break one, you've broken them all. If you fail in one area, you've failed in the whole thing. I mean, think of it this way. I could do a lot of good, but if I did one bad thing, and, I, and I'm, let's, I don't know, let's say I'm broken to the bank, you know, and, and I'm dragged before the court, and I say, well, I've done lots of good stuff. You're not, in, you're not before the court for all that good stuff here because you robbed the bank. You know, don't care about the good stuff you did. That's great. But then you did something really stupid and wrong. And you're here because of that. You, know, you, you can do one bad thing and you've broken all of them. The, the law declares the goodness of God, the badness, the sinfulness of man. And, and yet... The glory of that which was passing away, if the law was passing away, it carries the power of death, not the power of life. And the glory of it was so much that Moses' face shone with the glory. And the children of Israel said, we cannot bear to look upon that glory. Cover your face. Cover yourself. We can't bear to look. It says his face shone. And Israel could not bear to look on, on that glory that covered Moses. The glory was too much. It, it freaked them out. He was glowing without being radioactive, but it was in the presence of God that caused that glory to shine. And yet that glory was passing away. And so Moses, in verse 13, had to put a veil over his face. The children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that thing which was to be abolished passing away. And today, in the world, when we look upon the good news, it says our eyes are blinded. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, for, for the ruler of this world, the God of this world, has blinded their eyes and has blinded their minds. They would not see, otherwise they would be saved. Nevertheless, when we shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Amen. That's what you're called to walk in, is that same glory that was on Moses. That, that, that we would see with unveiled face, we would have to be covered up, so to speak. That this glory would be open and are being changed into the same image going from glory to glory. But the veil in Christ Jesus is taken away. The veil was torn from top to bottom. And just to give you an idea of what a big deal that was, this wasn't a little veil. It was 80 feet tall. It was inches thick. You can't rip that. The strongest person can't rip that. And it's torn from the top to the bottom. It's torn from 80 feet up. It gets torn. So that there is a clear and direct path to the Holy of Holies and nothing separating. Amen? Nothing standing between you and the throne of God. Amen? This is something you should get excited about. Amen. But, but if you're in your sin, you can't get excited about it. It's terrifying. The very thing. You say, cover it up. That's scary. I can't look upon that because I'm in my sin. But in Christ, the veil is taken away. A veils of unbelief, veils of sin, veils of the flesh. Every veil is torn in Jesus. When it turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. freedom. Amen. Amen. Now last time we looked in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 says, for you, you were called to freedom. You were called for this very purpose. 
that Christ paid the price for you to be free. It, it's freely given to us, but at great cost to God. God paid everything for us to walk in that freedom. He paid everything. Every drop of blood was spilt so that we could walk in this freedom, so that the veil could be torn. Every drop of blood was shed so that we could walk in this freedom. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Jesus paid for it. The Lord is that Spirit. Hallelujah. There is freedom in Christ Jesus. Here's the problem. Offense attempts to put the veil back on. It attempts to cover it up. It's saying, I don't want to look upon that. I can't. It bugs me. It's causing us to be mindful of the flesh rather than mindful of the spirit. To walk by the flesh rather than walk by the spirit. To embrace unbelief rather than faith. And it causes us to walk in bondage. We end up in bondage. In offense. There's only one who would benefit from such a thing and that's Satan. He's the only one who benefits from such a thing. But he desires, that is Satan, that the children for whom Christ died would, would not walk in the freedom that he purchased. An offense will do that. An offense will make you, will cause you to put the veil back on that you will not walk in freedom. It'll cause you to cover your eyes and say, no, I don't want that freedom. Oh, Papa. I don't really, I've not been wanting to preach about this. I've been arguing with God all of the last weeks. And that doesn't work. You can't argue with God. Uh, but God is very gracious. He listens, but, but it doesn't do any good. Um, so don't do it. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your energy. Because God's will is good. But I've been asking, Lord, I don't want to speak on this because it's offensive. To talk about offense is offensive. It's offensive. I, I, I was saying it partially to joke, but it's partially to joke. It's offensive. You mean I've got a veil that stops me from walking in freedom? Every time we hold back, yeah. every time I hold back from what God has, I am allowing it to be veiled. I, what I'm saying outwardly to everybody else is that you cannot see this glory. I don't want you to see it. And, and I'm, I'm afraid... This is what it said. I'm afraid that you're going to be exposed to the glory of God. And so I cover it up. And most of us are covering it up. I, I, I'm sorry, but God was so quiet. Drop a pin on a carpeted floor and you hear it. But most of us cover it up. Why do we do that? Well, because we're afraid. Either we're offended or we're afraid of offending somebody else. And then we're offended about the thought of offending somebody. And, and then it just leads to more offense and more confusion and more of all the other stuff. But we end up covering it. I'm not saying this to scold you. But I have to lovingly correct you a little bit. Okay? Because I do love you. You see, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't correct you. Okay? So, so please bear with me. Because ironically, a message on offense will probably leave somebody offended. Because that's what tends to happen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, then I would say, join the club. <laughs> We've got t-shirts. They won't fit, but you're welcome to have them anyway. Uh, they won't look good on you. The veil didn't look good on Moses, but he had to wear it. But you're called to freedom. And the problem is we often hold ourselves back from the freedom you have in Christ. In other words, we don't pray as we ought. We don't speak as we ought. We don't share as we ought. And we hold ourselves back. I'm an expert at holding myself back. You want to know what that's like? I, I'm not saying this, like, forgive me, brethren, I'm not saying this in the judgmental kind of way, to look down my nose, to put my glasses way down there and say, now see, I'm not doing that. Because I've been there a long time. You hold back. You put a veil over your face. You don't talk about Jesus. You don't pray for your community. You don't speak out. You, you don't tell anybody what the Lord has told you because you're afraid. And so you cover up with a veil 
And the other ones, the other people, are the ones who lose out. They end up losing out. We can then, our, our communities lose out. When the church fails to be the light it's called to be, and instead covers it up with a veil, so the light barely shines. Our communities lose out when we fail to be the salt, giving our communities the flavor that they've been crying out for. You can make a really good meal. Some of you are amazing cooks. We're hoping to partake of that afterwards in, in our lunch if you're here in person. Um, and I'm, for you folks online, I, I, our apologies, but you'll have to come here to Burger. Um, but you have to put salt in your cooking. If you don't put any salt in, it won't taste like anything. You can put in all the nicest ingredients, but it won't taste like anything if there's no salt. But I wonder why our communities don't taste like much. Or if there is a flavor, it's yucky flavor. It's, it's like those awful jelly beans you can get in, in the stores that have ungodly, unmentionable flavors on the back. And you don't even know what you're going to get until you pop it in your mouth. <laughs> it's awful. And then we wonder why communities taste so bad. Well, you're there. You're the one to give it flavor. Why is our community so dark? Well, you're the light. Amen. Where is it going to come from? It doesn't come from you. <laughs> Who's going to give it flavor if not from you? See, you're called to walk in freedom. The freedom is to shine the light of Christ by the Holy Spirit to Jocko Point, to Wanapate, to Mark's Day, Hager, Ward, Werner, Field, Sturgeon Falls, Garden Village, um, Noelleville, Manetteville, Lavigne, River Valley, every community, Crystal Falls, every nook and cranny of this area, that there would be nowhere left in darkness. Because the light of Christ will shine in the area. But if that glory is veiled, if you cover it up, nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to see it. And the problem is spiritually, there's no such thing as a vacuum. Something will always fill a vacuum. So if you're not giving it flavor, something is. That's what these those nasty flavors in the jelly bean illustration. That there are things giving our community flavor that God never intended. But you are called to the freedom in the Spirit, the freedom that Jesus died for, that He shed His own blood for, so that communities would see the glory of Christ in you. But most of us are, are held back by fear. We're held back by shame. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to be really real here, and I might offend you. So, so I'm, I'm, well, one of my pastor friends would say, hang on, anywhere. Oh, so God bless you, Pastor Francis. Uh, hang on, anywhere, to anything. Um, there can be a fear that grips your soul like no other when you're asked to pray out loud. Why is that? Now, I'm saying this because I've been there. I'm not saying this like I've never known that. Like, oh my gosh, they just asked me to pray. <laughs> Why is that? I was across the road last week and I was afraid to pray. Like, why? Why do we do that? Why do we stick a veil and say, well, I don't want to pray? I don't pray, I want to speak out loud? There, it was because of language, I was just to explain that. But still, why should I be afraid? What am I afraid of? Why am I putting a veil on? Just ask yourself why for a moment. Why am, I, why am I putting a veil on? Why am I allowing this fear to grip my heart because I've just been asked to pray? Why, why do we do that? Why if, when some of you have been saved a long time, okay, I'm not, I don't want to hint at anything, but you've been walking with the Lord, the Lord for a long time. The glory that God has deposited in you from 40 years of being in His presence is awesome. And the moment we have an opportunity, we get really nervous to share Jesus with somebody. Like, nope! I can't share that! Why? Why? Why do we do that? But we do that. We do that. Who? I think you've all done it. Yeah. I know I've done it. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're all nodding. Nobody yeah. nobody has the courage to raise our heads. We're just going to nod very quietly. <laughs> okay. Oh, to raise our hands and say, yeah, that was me. Why do we do that? We, but we do that. We allow shame. We allow fear of offense to cause the word of God, the living word by the spirit of the living God who is within you. Have you thought about this? Think about it for a moment. When you get to speak to the Old Testament saints in heaven, and you might say, well, Elijah, what was it like to get carried up in a chariot of fire? Moses, what was it like to split the Red Sea? They might ask you a question. What was it like to have the Spirit of God in you always when you wake up to the moment you go down? What was it like? What is it like to, to live with the Lord on that intimate level that we only dreamt of and, and spoke of the day? And yet in Hebrews 11, they could point you to the verse, say, we never saw it, but only from a distance so that we wouldn't be made perfect apart from you. Hmm. What was it like to walk like that? Hmm. Well, none of us want to say, well, there was a guy at A&W and I was really afraid to share Jesus. Well, but Jesus is in you. He's in you. We had to do it without him being in us. We had to share the glory of God without him being in us. We had to speak to a nation and say, repent, when God would only come upon us and he'd leave. But you have the glory of him. Not, ne never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Amen. You have that glory yep. that we could never dream of. That, that says your inheritance and you're afraid. And again, I'm not saying this to browbeat you. I'm not saying this to condemn you. I'm not saying this to make you feel bad or as if I'm looking down my nose at you because I've been there. And, and But for the grace of God, I mean, I still have to say, Lord, I don't want it to be veiled, the glory. I don't want the glory, your glory, because it's not mine. I, I don't want your glory in my life to be covered anymore. Because you've been called to freedom in Christ. You have the ability to declare life in a situation and watch God work. This is the amazing thing. Have you ever thought about this? You have the power to lay hands on somebody and see them get healed. Amen. Amen. Not because there's much in your hands, but because God is at work within you. Not because your hands are particularly special, but that God is looking for yielded vessels that His glory can flow through. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. You have this privilege if you believe on Jesus. And I think, as I'm getting to know you, I believe you all do believe on Jesus. That means that every single one of you, all of us, have that privilege. You can lay hands on somebody see them get healed. You can speak the name of Jesus over somebody. You can... They'll get saved because you spoke to them. Amen. Demons flee at the words that you speak. Amen. The moment you know who you are. That's right. And so they'd be very happy if you put the veil on so that nobody knows who you are, including yourself. But most of the time, we walk around with a veil rather than walking in the freedom that Christ purchased for us. Most of the time we walk in fear. I don't want to offend that one. I don't want to upset that one. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Stop it. Stop. And I'm speaking that to myself. Just stop it. <laughs> I'm speaking this to Chris now. So, so forgive me for having this conversation with myself in front of you all. Uh, we need to stop it. We need to stop it. And we need to start it. We need to stop hiding. Stop saying, oh, I'm only me. How many of us have said that? Yeah. Yeah. Said, I'm only me. Don't know much. Yeah. Not very tall. Oh. It's true, I'm not very tall. <laughs> um, not all that smart. Not all that educated. Not all that eloquent. Not all this. Not all that. When the Lord called me to ministry, my response was to run away. <laughs> and I learned something in the process. Besides the fact that you can't get away from God. It doesn't work. Jonah did, found that out. I found that out. Everybody who has ever tried running away from God will tell you it don't work. Uh, God's going to find you. 
doesn't matter where you go, he's going to find you. Um, but I learned that the reason why I was running away is because I was looking at me rather than looking at God. I work in me. See, I thought I'd have, to, I'd have to be the one to do it. God says, no, I want you to lay hands on them. I'm going to heal them. I just want you to put hands on them. Yeah. That's not hard. All you have to do is step out of the faith just a little bit. Believe it, I'm going to move. Just a little bit. All I want you to do is speak the name of Jesus, the name of my own beloved son, to my other children who don't know me yet, so that they can experience my life too. I'm going to do the hard work. I want you to speak truth. I'm the one who's going to do the work. I will be with you. I will protect you. I will guide you. I will anoint you. I will equip you. I will do everything for you. All you have to do is walk with me. That's it. In the freedom that I've given you. That's all. That is all. And yet, that is everything. When you can do that. Because there is so much joy. And as you step out just a little bit, by a little bit, Taking your eyes off yourself, that's what caused me to run away. And put your eyes upon him. Watch what he's going to do. When you can step out in the freedom that Christ paid for, and that the Spirit of the living God is here to ensure that we have. Hallelujah. Because the other part of that is that it says, but we all with unveiled face, Beholding as in a mirror. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? Who do you see? Me. Me. Good. It'd be really scary if you saw somebody else. <laughs> that would not be a good thing. There would be problems. If Paul looks in the mirror and sees Mike, sorry Mike, <laughs> that would not be a good thing. <laughs> you know? um, you should see yourself. Being transformed in Christ. Beholding the glory of the Lord. And are being changed into the same image. From glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When you can step out in the little bit of freedom that you have. Unveil. He's going to take you from glory to glory. He's going to take you. God is, is going to do such amazing things. It will boggle your mind. And, and here's. One last thing. Oftentimes you say, well, it's just me. I don't, I'm not very intelligent. I'm not very well educated. I, I'm not very strong. I'm not very smart. I'm not very whatever. All the excuses. And they are just that, excuses. Because God calls the weak things of the world to confound the strong. He chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He takes the things that are not nothing to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh could glory in his presence. Amen. So take your ignorance, if that's what you have. Say, Lord, I'm an ignorant person. I don't think any of you are, but if, if, if that's how you're feeling. I'm a weak person. I'm an uneducated person. Bring that to the Lord. And say, so, Lord, you're called me to freedom in this state that I am. Weak state, foolish state, whatever it is. Bring it to the Lord. Bring that to the Lord. And so, Lord, you've called me to freedom in this. To walk with you. I don't understand that. That scares me. But I'm believing you. That if I turn to the Lord, the veil is torn away. When we turn to the Lord, there is no more veil. And you walk in freedom. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many are willing to do that? Amen. Yeah. See, it's still going to be scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be scary. <clears throat> but if you keep your eyes fixed upon Him, yes. it says, with unveiled face we are beholding. That means our eyes. But your yes. spiritual eyes fixed on the Lord, He will do it. The only thing He asks of us is to walk by faith, mm -hmm. just a little bit, yeah. and see what He will do. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, my desire for you, beloved brothers and sisters, and, and I mean that with all my heart. I carry you it all in my heart when I go to Africa. I see all of your faces and I'm praying for you on the planes and on the buses. Because I, I mean that with everything I have and everything I am. 
that God has called you to something that is so amazing. He has called you to walk in His freedom and in His life. And I do not want any of you to settle for anything less than what Christ has paid for. That is why I want you to walk in His freedom. Amen. I want us all to stand. If you're willing. If this... Don't do it for Chris. Do it for Christ. Don't do it because of me. You don't owe me anything. But do it to the Lord who shed his own blood for you. That you could walk in the freedom he died for. That you could walk in the freedom he lives to ensure that you have. Do it for him. And I've been saying all last year and I'm going to keep saying it. We have to choose to enter in. It's an act of our will. The reason why I want you to stand up. God can hear you sitting down. You don't need to stand up for God to hear you. You don't need to come to the front for God to hear you. God will hear you sitting down. He'll, he'll hear you anywhere, everywhere, no matter how you are. But we have to enter in using our own will. You know, it, it's an act of surrender. That we are choosing to surrender to the Lord. We're choosing to use our body, our being, to surrender to God. In everything. Just as the Lord cornered me in a tent, ten years ago, and I fell on my knees. And as the song says, I fell on my knees and cried out holy. And I did that. And it was one of the most wonderful times in my life. We have to enter in. And we have to choose. And nobody can do that for you. So Father, as a people, and as individuals, as men and women, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, Father God, as brothers and sisters, we are coming before you. Father, first we ask your forgiveness, Lord, where we have veiled your glory at work within us. Lord, we have allowed fear and shame and intimidation and everything else to hide your glory. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Father, for looking to our own flesh instead of looking to you. Lord, help us to look to you. Now, Father, as we receive your forgiveness, Lord God, Father, we are committing, Lord God, that we will not let your glory be veiled. But, Lord, we will turn to you and we'll ask you, Lord, how do you want your glory shown in this, in this instance? That, Lord, we will have the courage to ask and the courage to obey. The courage to walk with you, Lord, in a greater way, Father God. To walk in the freedom that is found in your Holy Spirit in the freedom that is bought and paid for by the blood of the Lamb, in the freedom that, Father God, you have desired us to walk in as your beloved children. Father, we this day are purposing to walk in that freedom, to walk in that joy, and to walk in that love, that your holy name will be glorified in us, and that, Father, our communities, Father, from Jocko Point, Lord God, to Wanapate, from the Wellville to Field, that, Father, every community and every community that is represented by every person online who is praying right now, that the flavor of Christ and the glory of God will be seen in those places. Yes. Through us, your vessels. In Jesus' name we are praying and believing. Amen. 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 Now look out. God is going to use you. He's going to use you in quietness, he's going to use you in gentleness, he'll use you in power, and he'll use you in glory. But be prepared. Amen? Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and he will keep you. May he be gracious to you. Cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.